So welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're continuing this day's program on VAP at the Back to Guard Symposium. And our next speaker is Dr. Radu Tinku. Very welcome from the Clinical Emergency Hospital in Bucharest. Thank you. <coughs> Good afternoon. I um, uh, will do a presentation more technically if um, you want, because I want to understand together about uh, VAP and about uh, possibility of prevention. My disclosure here, I work for uh, Teleflex and uh, I have some funding research from Bactigard. Why do we talk about today about this uh, VAP? And we discuss because the infection in our hospital is the worst nightmare. We uh, don't want to have infection in our hospital because this costs lives and costs money for the hospital and is not very good for us to have infection. We have this uh, resistant bacteria in critical care. It's a true, it's a truth and it's a reality, unfortunately. And this is the uh, consequences of using uh, a lot of antibiotics long period of time. Nosocomial infection is uh, the worst scenario in uh, the ICU and uh, this uh, infection <coughs> appears in time of uh, hospitalization, but uh, we can attribute it uh, uh, till 30 days after discharge. But the most important thing things is one third are uh, considered preventable, and it is very important to prevent this kind of infection. We have a lot of sources of infection from the patient. We have uh, patient flora, normal flora, and uh, we have uh, Sorry, medical, medical personnel colonized, and we are, we are the carriers for this infection, unfortunately, by our hand or clothes. We have some environmental uh, contaminated from the hospital, fluid, food, or air, or medication. I performed a study, it's very interesting, on the pills we found bacteria, E. coli on the pills for the patient. And in, on the invasive devices, we have a lot of uh, devices on the critical care patient, urinary catheter or vascular or endotracheal tube or other uh, monitoring systems. The proportion of VAP in the United States is not uh, very important if uh, in the picture I present only 2%, but this 2% cost money and the uh, cost mortality and morbidity for the hospital. We discuss a lot about definition. In the last decades, we discuss about what is VAP and if these terms is um, the best term to, uh, to describe the event. V ventilatory associated events is a new approach and this approach wants to use only objective criterion to diagnose ventilatory associated events instead of VAP. And they uh, put three other terms. Ventilatory associated condition is the first step of the ventilatory associated event surveillance, which identify any complication occurring in mechanical ventilated patient. And this concept have several advantages, but most important things is all the criteria tend to be objective. VAC definition of this ventilatory associated condition, it referred to a patient for at least two days of stability or improvement of the ventilatory settings, followed by at least two days of worsening o oxygenation. IVAC identify a subgroup from this VAC that are potentially related to the infection. In conclusion, this VAC is, this IVAC, it's a normal VAC with abnormal leukocyte number or temperature. And VAP now, in a new definition, uh, tends to be this one. It's an IVAC 
with evidence of mucopurulent secretion or positive result of microbiological tests performed from the specimen from the respiratory tract. And we can see from this picture an overlapping of the definition. Incidence of VAP. We discussed and Christina discussed uh, the incidence in Sweden. And in, I found this in uh, Europe. Half of all cases of hospital-acquired pneumonia is VAP. 10 to 30 percent of all mechanical ventilated patients that have higher, highest risk being early uh, in the course of hospitalization. It's the second most common nosocomial infection in the ICU. Risk for VAP is greatest during the first day of mechanical ventilation. And we know that early VAP is monobacterial in the major of cases and is antibiotic sensitive bacteria. From the theory to the practice, we uh, know that half of all antibiotics prescribed in ICU are administrated for respiratory tract infection. And in some studies, incidence rate for VAP is uh, up to 60%. And we know by statistic that VAP increased ventilatory days by four, critical care days by four, and hospital length of stay by nine days, with a mortality rate huge enough, 20 to, uh, uh, to 50 percent. But pneumonia can be a life-treating condition. We know that. We have a lot of statistics, and patients could die after a ventilatory-associated pneumonia. We know about the mechanism of resistance. The bacteria develop a lot of, this uh, a lot of mechanisms chromosomal mutation or plasmid-mediated uh, uh, resistance, uh, develop some efflux pumps for antibiotics, S produce some enzymes to inactivation of drugs, and can, uh, can uh, do inhibition of the drug uptake. And this creates our critical care bacteria, multidrug-resistant bacteria. On a study on 1,000 patients uh, receiving mechanical ventilation, they want to identify the risk factor, uh, and the risk factor is, uh, is very correlated with the diagnosis of the admission. Burns, trauma, and respiratory disease is a risk factor to develop ventilatory-associated pneumonia. But we know the presence of the ATT is by far the most important risk factor to develop this complication because produce a violation of the natural defense mechanism. Bacteria obtain through the tube direct access to the lower tract via microaspiration occurring in time of the intubation of development of the biofilm. It's a major problem because the biofilm incorporates the bacteria and produce a microenvironment for the bacteria. Pulling and trickling the secretion around the cuff, it's important to have a normal pressure into the cuff. And this suction, uh, Christina told about, the, it's very important to have suction every two hours to take this secretion around the cuff. And this ATT in the trachea impairment of mucociliary clearance of the secretion. We know from the statistic that reintubation following extubation increased the rates of ventilatory-associated pneumonia, and when the con medical condition of the patient permitted, use non-invasive positive pressure ventilation. Where do bacteria came from? From tracheal colonization, or for, from the gastrointestinal colonization, or from the ventilatory system. We have a lot of bacteria around the, uh, the um, ventilatory system. How do they get in the lung? Two main routes, through the tube and around the tube, around the tube of, uh, around the cuff. We know that all medical devices offer a surface for the bacterial adhesion. We know that the bacteria t tends to uh, to be adherent of the surface of the device. And, uh, and all medical devices are susceptible to this colonization. And in ICU, you use 60, 
70% of this uh, kind of devices. And the infection associated with the critical care devices uh, are very resistant to the treatment, resistant to the immuno, immuno defense mechanism, and difficult to treat, to, treat, to treat with antibiotics. And other and bacteria, one of them, uh, Mirabilis, the famous Mirabilis, produce some exopolymers, and these polymers do uh, create a biofilm very, very protective for the bacteria. In the last in the last uh, step of uh, formation, the mature biofilm produces the dispersal, and this dispersal can produce a new pneumonia. We have in our critical care, in, the, in uh, one day, a patient has Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and after four days, has Acinetobacter. And this is uh, it, it is, uh, it is uh, determined by the infected biofilm in the endotracheal tube. This infected biofilm produces embolization in the distal airways. We have a lot of strategy. We know and we can discuss till tomorrow how to prevent the ventilatory associated pneumonia. We want to change some uh, 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 physical chemical modification of the biomaterial. We want to incorporate some antimicrobial agents into the medical device. Some medical device release some uh, biocides or antibiotics. Others uh, uh, release some anti-infective agents like ionic silver or chlorhexidine. But Bactigard wants to create something else, this coating with noble metal alloy of these devices. We know because it's important to understand the mechanism of the action and the physiopathology of the ventilatory associated pneumonia. We know that most of this uh, ventilatory associated pneumonia are uh, due to bacterial pathogen. We know that early VAP is monobacterial or late VAP is pluribacterial, and the uh, aggressivity of these bacteria tend to be different between early or late VAP. We know that drug resistance is a concern in ventilatory associated pneumonia. This is only three of the um, most aggressive bacteria in our critical care, and this produces a lot of mechanisms to prevent, um, uh, to, pre to develop the resistant mechanism. Gastrointestinal colonization is a reality in our critical care because we use a lot of medication to reduce the gastric secretion. And this, this uh, increase in gastric pH leads to bacterial overgrowth. And the reflu re reflux from the gastric is a reality because we put some nasogastric tube to our patient, and this produces some uh, reflux from the stomach. Colonization of oropharynx, dental plaque. Almost 40% uh, of the patient from the ICU have this contamination of the oral uh, area. And after, ad after the patient uh, was admitted in uh, critical care, uh, the risk increased because it's difficult to perform adequate oral hygiene. And we know that the critical care condition change properties of the saliva. And we, uh, after we use antibiotics for the patient, we uh, uh, obtain some reduction in, uh, in the anaerobic flora. Prevention in VAP in ICU, we know we are, uh, a lot of recommendation based uh, on the studies. Uh, the doctor do this to uh, reduce VAP, but we have some institution measure to reduce VAP, surveillance and educational programs it's in order to reduce unnecessary antibiotic prescription, use non-invasive ventilation when we need, and the medical condition permitted. ATT, noble metal coated catheter or devices, selective digestive decontamination can be an institution measurement, and some early winning and extubation politics and change the infected device immediately. The cost we discussed in the 
last session about the cost, we know that the duration of the mechanical ventilation increase with VAP, length of stay in ICU increase, length of stay in hospital increase, and the cost for the hospital increase. Noble metal alloy catheter is the proposal from Bactigard. This uh, device are very unique because reducing the adhesion of the microorganisms to the medical device surface in and out, reducing biofilm formation as a consequence. The biofilm formation is known that is a critical step in development of VAP. And we know that once the microbes have formed in the biofilm, they are much more resistant to the antibiotics and to the um, immune response of the body. And these galvanic elements formed by the coating metal, silver, gold, and palladium with different electropotential is the mechanism of action for this type of device. And silver release has no pharmacological effects in humans. And we speak later. This is the galvanic effect is created due to the noble metals in the fluid, urine or blood, and this is create a microcurrent, and this microcurrent prevents bacteria from adhering to the surface. We know these metals have different electropotential, and when we put these metals with this different electropotential in the electrolytes such, such urine or blood, a galvanic current will occur. Effects depends on the interface through electrical interaction with the superficial structure of the microorganism. And it's very important that there is no dose-response re relationship. And the galvanic effect produces and obstructs the adherence process of the bacteria. And the second mechanism is very interesting because they describe a new mechanism of action, and this galvanic current may interfere with the uh, electron transport chain, respiratory chain in the microorganism. This is the practical approach. We can measure this, uh, this uh, uh, galvanic current, potentiodynamic measurement was performed. It's a reality, it's not only in the theory, it's practice. And we know if uh, the bacteria wants to adhere to this device, the adherence is mm, it's, uh, less uh, comparative with the normal device. Silver release and antimicrobial properties. I put this slide because I want to understand that Bactigard device not use ionic silver release because in the last decades, we uh, uh, have um, a good studies about this uh, device with ionic silver release, and this, uh, this uh, release appears to be somehow protective and anti-infective. But in the, in the last few years, the scientific world uh, recognized some mechanism of resistance to the silver. They can they, uh, identify the genes, the chromosome can modulate this resistance. For Bactigard uh, ATT, we mm, perform an adhesion test. And this adhesion test, uh, 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 the aim was to evaluate the reduction in the microbial adherence to the uh, device. This is the result. We observed that the adhesion test uh, was, uh, posit uh, was positive, and for all these bacteria, it was a positive test. This is my study. First uh, time uh, it was published in Berlin in 2015, um, and the name is very interesting. Do silver-coated endotrahal tubes really work? Uh, the aim of the study was to uh, evaluate the incidence of VAP, and uh, if uh, this incidence can be reduced uh, using these devices. We perform a comparative, prospective, and randomized study in our critical care toxicology unit in Bucharest between January and December 2013. We enrolled 
100 patients intubated for longer than 24 hours admitted for coma due to the drug poisoning, considering the profile of our clinic. Pre-admission contaminated patients and patients with comorbidities were excluded because we, I want to observe the intrinsic mechanism of action for this device and the protective of the device for the bacterial adherence, not to the patient with the risk. All the patients uh, receive normal ATT with silicon and silver-coated ATT, and primary outcome was the VAP incidence, while duration of antibiotic treatment and the hospitalization uh, were the secondary outcome. We obtained these results at five days, a reduce with 67% in ventilatory associated pneumonia for the um, noble metal alloy ATT, comparative with the standard one, and the hospital uh, length of stay reduced with uh, 18%. We observed not difference regarding the hospitalization uh, statistic one, because the lot is too small, but uh, if uh, we extended uh, this year the study, we hope to have some statistical data. About the um, flora uh, of the patient, we have some interesting data. Uh, we identified Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Klebsiella pneumonia only on standard AE ATT, comparative with noble metal alloy patient. And we want in the future to extend uh, uh, the study and enroll a much more patient because we want to observe if the device, uh, if the device can uh, modulate the adhesion of the bacteria by the name. It's very interesting. My conclusion is uh, ventilatory associated pneumonia appears frequently in the ICU and it is associated with significant morbidity in critical ill patients. There is enough evidence now to indicate that VAP is preventable and that hospital can decrease these rates. The normal metal alloy endotracheal tube appears to offer a unique mechanism of action, and this mechanism is very important because it is the first intervention that become user-independent after intubation and requiring no further action by the clinician. You put the tube and the tube do the work for you. The innovative mechanism using galvanic effects prevent bacterial adherence and I think uh, the bacteria cannot develop some mechanism of prevention to this current galvanic current. But I want to extend my research because future study for ATT should be powered to demonstrate the efficiency to the patient outcome, not only to the adherence of the medical device. Thank you.